In this video, we're going to be showing you how to completely disassemble your engine's rotating assembly, including cylinder packs and main bearings. Hey everyone, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here for part two of our how to rebuild a diesel engine video series. And in this video, we're going to be further disassembling the engine all the way down to the rotating assembly. So we're gonna be doing your cylinder pack, piston, and main bearing removal. And that'll pretty much be all the disassembly. There will be one on oil pump and water pump, but that'll be later on. So this will be showing you how I remove the piston packs and the main bearings. And I'm gonna do the, you do the rods and the packs in sets of two because your cylinders are in sets of two one and six, two and five, three and four are pretty much on the same crank throw. So you're gonna do them in sets. And then the mains I'm gonna be doing, there's seven main bearings, I'm gonna be doing four and then three. And I'll explain why in the video, as well as the thrust bearings and explaining what they do. Then in the next video, I'll be showing how we install main bearings and how I do it, okay? Hope you enjoy the video. Right before we get in the video, I wanted to say thank you to Gonzalo and Alexander. Good luck on the Think Big program. Uh, these are people that have donated since the last video at adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. Thank you. Now, before you start removing cylinder packs, you're gonna to wanna to remove the piston cooling jets. And it's just a single bolt that holds it in place. There it is. And you just loosen the bolt and remove the piston cooling jet. Now, some guys leave them in place and you can, but if you hit that with the connecting rod and it bends it, Odds are very good that it's gonna burn up that new cylinder the first time it gets under load. And some guys also keep them in order. I do not, um, it, that is personal preference. So, we have your number two and number five connecting rods here. And that is your connecting rod cap. And as I said, as I stated before, we I do them in sets of two because you crank throws are in pairs. So I've already removed the connecting rod for cylinder number two. We're gonna remove the bolts for number five. So just remove it and the connecting rod cap should come off there and you're gonna to wanna to keep these in order and they should have numbers on them already. If they don't, I suggest engraving them or writing with a paint pen. So there's your connecting rod and the bearing stayed in place and your cap. Now these are what they call fractured rods. And take a look at the bearing here, no visible damage, that's good. And if you look at the rod here where it connects, it looks broken, it's jagged, and that's normal. This is a fractured rod, which means when they machine it, they actually break it at a weak point, and when it goes back together, it will fit perfectly. You won't even see a seam there. And these are very fragile. You have to be careful. Do not put them face down while using them. So we're looking at your cylinders here. I'm gonna be removing cylinder pack two and show you how to do that. And I'm gonna be removing cylinder five, but I'm just gonna show you how to do number two. Like I said, it's all the same. So we're gonna be using this, uh, this pack puller here. And what you do is you loosen the pack puller and it has this tapered shaft in here. And it's a very, very, very tight fit. It's uh, really hard. I've spent a couple minutes at times trying to get it to seat sometimes in the cylinders. And basically you just get it in and then you push it in. It'll push all the air out of the cylinder like that. And then that large nut there on the bottom, you're gonna tighten it. And we have this specialty socket here, which is a inch and an eighth and it's really long. Um, what does that look like? About eight inches long. Um, and you're just gonna, it's a half inch drive. I usually use an impact. You could use a ratchet if you wanted to. But you're just gonna hammer it on. It doesn't have to be super, super tight. I usually put this on the lowest setting of my half inch gun, which is like, what, 100 foot pounds. So that is now tight. You can't pull it back out. Kind of the point. Then you're gonna put this, uh, this polar assembly on here and use the same style nut, inch and an eighth. And you're gonna run it down with the same socket, and it's gonna hopefully pull that cylinder pack out with the piston. So I'm just gonna tighten it down, and you can see it pulling the pack out. Now, a trick I've 
done is put a little pry bar under the lip of the liner because when it goes back in, I've had them just fall right back into place and then you gotta pull it back out. But if you put the little pry bar there, just as you're loosening it, it'll tend to stay up, which is what you want because now you have to pull it out. Now, if you wanted to, you could pull this with the polar assembly off, but it's just added weight and these are fairly heavy to begin with. So you're gonna leave your polar plug in there and the shaft and it's now ready to pull out so just brace yourself and pull it out and it'll come out piston connecting rod and all and hopefully the bearing stays with the rod and not on the crank but either way it doesn't really matter so the bearing did not stay on the rod you can see the rod there now after you do all six you'll have a set that looks like this and you'll see that i pulled the rings off the piston rings, that's because it helps to get the plug back out. So now let's talk about your main bearings. So these are our main bearing caps here. You can see I've pulled two and three main bearing caps. I leave one, four, and seven on, and I do two, three, five, and six, and two, three, five, and six back on, then I do one, four, and seven now you're looking at five there five and six i've removed six already as you can see and the bearing the upper portion of the bearing is still in place now i'm going to be pulling the number five as you can see the number right there number five main cap and here's the part numbers there's actually two different part numbers you can see on the left the upper and on the right the upper they are different they only go in the right holes there's three and there's four of each so this is number five it's going to be using the main bearing journal picture that was on the right in the previous picture but you can't swap them out because the bearing tabs are in different locations so these are just main bolts uh they are fairly tight um usually a half inch impact will remove them though and if you've never done this before the first time you pull this bolt out they stink horribly um oil gets trapped in those main bearing bolts and it tends to get super hot and it'll burn and it, it's a rotten disgusting smell anytime you do mains you'll never forget the smell um, if you ever smell like really bad burned oil um that's basically what it is so remove your bolts both of them um now do not ever ever leave that main cap up there without bolts um it's fairly heavy you know it's probably about five pounds and if that sucker falls out without a bolt uh it will break your face um same with the bolts be careful with them too now you're looking at your bearing and your bearing journal this one looks good there's no deep gouges or anything in it now how do you get the top portion of the bearing out is the next question and how i'm going to be showing you now this is a C13. This is a specialty cat tool. Uh, there actually is a specialty tool cat uses for removing the uppers. Um, it looks a lot like a bolt. Um, so what I use is just a bolt. You can buy the specialty tool. I think it's about a hundred bucks. And it's basically kind of a bolt with a, uh, a flat flexible head. Um, but you just find a bolt that will fit. You see the oil passage there in the main journal? And what you're going to do is you're going to push that bolt into that oil passage and then rotate the crank around with the turning tool and it'll just pull it'll just push the uh the upper main bearing portion right out you'll see pretty easy and then you just take the bolt out obviously now this only works on a c13 on two three five and six because one four and seven main journals do not have an oil uh, feed port in the crank so there's another way to do that which i'll be showing you here real soon so we're pushing our bolt up make sure it stays in place and i i'll usually smooth the top of the bolt if it's got like you know the dashes or any sort of um numbers on it just so it's a smooth surface so it's in place is up against the the uh, bearing and as you rotate it around and obviously you're going to go so that the tab comes out first you don't want to try and push the tab into the block that would be a bad idea so you can see the uh the bearings just pulling right out as i rotate now it's going to leak a lot of oil because the oil galley is sealed up there by that main journal so 
it's gonna roll out and then as it gets to a point it's just gonna kind of flop out because there's no tension on it anymore you see all that nasty oil that's been in there now sometimes I get stuck due to the uh, adhesion properties of a uh, the oil there surface tension and uh, just kind of play with it it'll usually come right out so there you go nasty oil check the main journal check your main bearing for damage and then you're gonna want to remove that bolt now anytime you're doing any bearing work always inspect the bearings if you see one that's spun which would mean it is just rotated around the crankshaft and in the block that block and the cranks usually junk or it can be machined if you wish but you have to remove it so as you can see I've removed number one I have installed two three five and six I've also removed number seven now the installation portion is going to be on the next video so don't worry I didn't pass that up I just wanted to show you the thrust bearings and also the main bearings that don't have the oil port now we get them out so here's your thrust bearings are these little uh bronzish colored bearings here and they just sit in number four main bearing journal area and they keep the crank from moving forward or back very much and that's all they are um now you remove both of them and that that's what keeps the crank from moving backwards and forward we'll explain that more in the installation procedure now you'll see there's no oil port on this crank journal so what you do is you get, get a screwdriver and be very careful you're not going to scratch that journal but you're just going to push the bearing out a little bit you see how it popped out okay now what you're going to want to do is get a heel bar of some sort i have these little indexing ones by gear wrench they're really nice and what you do is you just kind of grab the bearing and you pry it out be very careful with the journal um, the bearings aren't getting reused so you're going to nick them that's okay and it's going to get to that tip over point and it's just going to flop out and that is all of your main bearings they have now been removed inspect your crank journals and your bearings for heavy damage and then it'll be time for installation you should have a set of used bearings from the mains and rods that looks like this and thank you for watching the video